All right, you are absolutely gonna have your mind blown. You're looking for an oceanfront property um, in the South Florida area, and you just don't know where to go. So I have taken the liberty of cruising around, and it was tough work, to each one of these oceanfront communities from uh, the South Miami all the way up to uh, Manalapan, uh, Florida and I have broken down each one on why you want to be there some of the top real estate in there And I'm super excited. Are you ready? Let's make it happen So Manalapan is going to be the first community I'm going to talk about. It is pronounced M-A, lowercase M-A, N-A-L, capital, hyphen A, hyphen P-I-N, Manalapan. Even though there's no pin at the end in the spelling, it's Manalapan. And the way they got that name was, back in the early days in 1931, a little history lesson for you, a large share of first settlers relocated from Manalapan, New Jersey, uh, which caused the name. So it is a town in Palm Beach County, Florida. And according to the 2010 census, there are around 406 year round residents. And that swells to a population of 495, about a 90 person difference um, whenever it's seasonal or other non-resident homeowners are included. So according to the 2005 Florida Estimates of Population from the U of F, University of Florida Bureau of Economic and Business Research, um, they're saying the population is down to 355 nowadays. And again, that's from 2005. So what we're gonna do is try to get you down to Florida so we can increase that number back up to 495. Now, before we go any further, if you haven't figured it out, you've been watching my videos, hit the uh, subscribe button, ba -ba -ba -ba, click the bell, and then uh, make sure you get all notifications because at least once a week, you're gonna be seeing me post videos about the Florida luxury living market on this channel. So the first thing I wanna talk about is median home value because this is a real estate fed channel. I'm a real estate nerd, I am a realtor, um, and I like real estate. So the median home value is around $2 million. Compare that to the national average of $185,000. That's right. 2 million compared to $185,000. So 99% of the properties in Manalapan are owned. Um, if there are any rentals, it's about $2,250 a month. Now, is Manalapan safe? That's a big question and it comes up in Google a lot. When it comes to crime and safety, it gets a B minus. Um, theft is the highest crime with an annual amount of 3,164. And you know, just for a unit of comparison, um, the national average is just over 2,000. So let's talk about the demographics real quick. 65 years and older is 50% of the population. 55 to 64 years, the next um, age bracket down is 22%. And 45 to 54 years old, which I may just fall into that category, you never know, is only representing about 8%. So what this basically says is you need to be old to live there. If you're 18 years old and you're thinking about buying a $4 million house, by, by all means contact me, but I don't think Manalapin is for you. And why is that? Yeah, there's not much nightlife and, and stuff like that. So education level uh, as a master's or higher, which is gonna be 29% of the population. Bachelor's degree is about 33% and some college or associate's degree is only about 24%. So let's talk about the median household income. The median household income is just under $200,000. So these are just stats, but if I were a betting man, I would bet that those 65 and older or 55 to 64 year olds, they don't have any income. They're probably already made it and retired there. So that might be, uh, and that's just a guesstimation on why the income is only $200,000, yet the median home price is $2 million. Those numbers don't add up. Okay, so we did some demographics and is Manalapin safe? I'm going back to my nerdy roots and that is real estate. You all wanna know about real estate. Only real estate I'm gonna talk about on this uh, Luxury Living Miami YouTube channel is going to be a luxury. So if you're not looking for luxury, you can just um, watch all the videos in ooh and ah, or you can go to a different channel. The current highest price listing in Manalapin is 100. 
$115 million. Try to wrap your brain around $115 million purchase. It's actually, at the time I made this video, it is the highest priced property of any sort, uh, with a structure on it, not land, um, in the Florida Miami-Dade MLS. The property address is 2000 South Ocean Boulevard with a zip of 33462. So the top four properties that are currently for sale at the time I made this video are not six-figure homes. That's $100,000. Not seven-figure homes. That's nine million and under. They are eight and nine-figure homes. Again, wrap your brain around that. It's mind-boggling to me. So the highest, most recent sold property is uh, 1660 South Ocean Boulevard at $38.9 million. So whenever we talk about a lot of these oceanfront communities and oceanfront videos I'm going to be doing, chances are good in the address of all the highest priced ones is going to be the word ocean. Ocean Boulevard, Ocean Drive, Ocean Avenue, you know, think of a backwards town and I've come from a backwards town with like you know, little creeks and ponds and low priced housing. Um, and think of the street names. Now think back, probably never have any of those roads been named Ocean, right? Because there's just no ocean around. So um, if there's ever anything in the name which says um, the value of an area, neighborhood, street, whatever, it would be the word Ocean in my opinion. Just gonna throw that out there. The second highest sold property is 36 million dollars third highest sold property is 27 million dollars and the fourth is 24 million dollars a paltry 24 million dollars that is you know somebody that's just moving into the area that's the new person on the block 24 million huh. and the fifth is 19 million dollars that person's even lower than the person for $24 million. If you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, uh, that $19 million person had better get on and start start trading some stocks or bonds or something to catch up to the rest of the crowd ahead of them. And the sixth highest sold property is 18.5 million and the seventh is going to be 18.2 million. And I can go on and on. I mean, isn't it mind blowing how many eight um, figure homes there, there are? Uh, that's a pretty uh, extravagant area. So I'm gonna go over um, notable peeps, I call it. This is something I've never done before. If you're thinking about buying there or selling there, first thing you do is comment below, text me 305-918-1036 or email me brian at briansellsmiami.us. That's the first thing you do. Uh, but this notable peep section, comment below, let me know if you like it. Um, when you move into the Manalapan area, you are going to be living among some previous, some former pretty cool peeps. Um, first one being, F. Lee Bailey. Now he's a famed criminal defense attorney. Don King, we all know Don King, boxing promoter. Um, a little less known might be Thomas Lowell Guinness, obviously um, not the Guinness Book of Records. He is part of the Guinness Beer family. Uh, made their fortune and uh, other than beer in banking and real estate. Gloria Guinness, wife of Lowell Guinness. She was a Mexican socialite and a fashion icon back in her day. Charles McCullough former Xerox chairman and CEO. Um, his family had an oceanfront estate in Manalapan for about 50 years. Now, funny side note is, back whenever I was younger, I used to work for Xerox. I worked for Xerox roughly 10 years making copies about 20 or more years ago for $6.50 an hour. I remember getting a raise to $7 and then a raise to $7.50 and then ultimately I think I left the company making $10 an hour. So um, good to see uh, the money I didn't make went to Charles so he could own his house uh, in Manalapan, which we all know are eight figure homes. I'm not bitter, Charles. Next person is Generoso Pope he, <laughs> Jr., the founder of the National Enquirer. Lois Pope, uh, widow of Generosa, is a philanthropist. Yanni, the musician Yanni, um, lives in an oceanfront home. Hall Prewitt, he's the past town commissioner there. He's an artist and a photographer, race car driver, um, an inventor of the personal computer products, um, an early pioneer of you know, personal computer type revolution, stuff like that. Jeff Brambum is a race car driver, IMSA champion. 
Curtis Shillingworth is a circuit judge, Palm Beach, Florida. Um, murdered with his wife Marjorie in 1955, wow. And then self-help guru, we all know him, some may not love him, but he relocated to Manalapan in 2013, Tony Robbins. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about with Man at Manalapan is something I personally experienced when I was in Florida. Last, I uh, booked an appointment at the O Palm Beach Resort, not the letter O, not the letter O, not the word O-H, E-A-U, it's water in French. Um, and I went up there and got Manicure, pedicure, haircut, massage, and just hung out in the spa for about a half a day and had dinner um, oceanfront. So on the, on the tables, looking over the ocean, watching the sunset, I timed it out just perfectly. And I've got to tell you again, it was amazing. Um, and there's nothing quite like a spa, obviously, but to get pampered for a whole day and oh, they, uh, and they knocked it out of the park. Super nice. I mean, we're dealing with COVID time, so I had to be a little hypersensitive to that. I think I went up on a weekday, which is recommended if you want more privacy. Uh, I think it was a Monday, but absolutely loved it. Can't recommend O uh, Palm Beach Resort enough. And you can now actually stay there. I didn't stay there, but you can stay over as well. So the O Palm Beach Resort is over seven acres. And some notable awards is the Forbes Five Star Award 2016 through 2021, AAA Five Diamond Award 2016 through 2021, and SPA Awards. Um, so quite a noteworthy place. So that, my friends, is going to be Manalapin. If you've ever been to Manalapin, comment below. If you're thinking about going there, if you're thinking about relocating there, feel free to comment. Let's get a little conversation going. DM me, smoke signals, carrier pitching, email. I'll just meet you there, uh, whatever. And um, we'll, I'll take you through Manalapin. A lot of good opportunity there for purchasing. Okay, so the second community I'm going to talk about that is oceanfront real estate that you may want to consider to purchase is going to be North Palm Beach. We've all heard of Palm Beach before. Um, it's an amazing place. So is Palm Beach safe? So earlier this year, the National Council for Home and Safety and Security ranked the village of North Palm Beach among the fifth safest city in Florida. In 2017, the village crime rate dropped significantly. Um, one of my reference sources I like to go to is niche.com, and it gives it a B- for crime and safety with only 52 assaults, 7 rapes, 15 robberies, 105 burglaries, 602 thefts, 128 motor vehicle thefts. So let's talk about um, education of the population, and bachelor's degrees are dominant at 29% of the population with some college or associate's degree following second at 27%, high school diploma or equivalent at 22%, and the top education barometer of a master's degree or higher is only 17%. So I'm always curious uh, with a couple of things. One is the median income, which we saw at Manalapin was 200,000. Here at North Palm Beach, it falls significantly to $68,000 a year. Some notable rankings is best places to retire in Florida, number 38 out of 652. Best suburbs for young professionals in Florida, um, 63 out of 378. And lastly, best suburbs to live in Florida, 110 out of 378. So the median home value, again, comparing this to Manalapin of 2 million um, in North Palm Beach is $300,000 with 76% of the properties owned. Obviously, that would be quick math. 24% will are left to be rent, uh, with a median rent of $1,500 a month. So you can see just in the two oceanfront communities I talked about, quite a discrepancy. But hey, we don't want to forget to hit the subscribe button, click the bell and all notifications, because I am, this is just one in a series of oceanfront community videos I'm going to be doing for buyers just like you. So North Palm Beach is an incorporated village in the Palm Beach County with 12,000 people. So quite a significant difference over Manalapan. And I might compare these as I keep on doing the videos of oceanfront communities. Feel free to comment below and let me know if you find that of interest. But I think it's pretty cool to compare them. So this one is quite a bit different with over 12,000 uh, residents. So I'm gonna go back to my notable peeps section and start with Jeff Atwater. He's the CFO of Florida. <laughs> 
Pretty cool. Um, Gardner Dickinson, PGA golfer. Uh, you can assume Florida, a lot of golfing, a lot of golfers. Uh, that's the first golfer we talked about. Gardner is a resident of North Palm Beach. Mike Douglas, um, famous American entertainer. Ryan Klesko is a retired MLB. Uh, it's a Major League Baseball, for those of you who don't know, first baseman. Tom Lewis, U.S. representative, 83 through 95. Another golfer, legend, Jack Nicklaus. He's also a course architect. He des he's designed many golf courses. So if you have gotten your butt kicked by a Jack Nicklaus golf course, comment below. Don't be embarrassed. They're the first person is going to be the toughest, but after that, there's going to be a lot of you saying, oh yeah, his course kicked my butt too. I know it. Edelin Nordegren is a Swedish former model and the ex-wife of golfer Tiger Woods. So, uh-oh. Sir Harry Oaks is a early developer of the area, land developer. And Chris Klein, that's Chris with a C, Klein with a C, coal mining billionaire. Uh, I think Bloomberg regarded him as the new King Cole. All right, so if you want to get your name added to this list of notable peeps, first thing you got to do is contact me and move on down to North Palm Beach. I'll take care of you. I'll get you in the notable peeps section on Google. Okay, so let's talk about things to do. What is there to do in North Palm Beach? Now, first thing to do is beaches, of course. North Palm Beach. Beaches, beaches. Postcard perfect Florida beaches is what I read and I, th I thought that was such a fantastic description. I wanted to make sure I put it in my video. So there are about 30 uh, tropical uh, beach parts spanning 47 or so miles along the Atlantic Ocean from Jupiter Beach down to Boca Raton. Um, out of all of them, I just wanted to point out that manatee spotting. Yes, that's those weird animals that swim. Not bad animals, not ugly animals, just strange animals that seem to only be in the Florida area. Manatee watching is available at Loggerhead Park, uh, and that is in Juneau Beach. There's also a Loggerhead Marine Life Center, um, which is one of my favorite things, a sea turtle conservation area. I love sea turtles. I don't know why. I think they're just pretty. You see them on uh, those high definition photo arts or paintings. And I don't know. I just think they're so cute swimming around in the ocean. A couple other things to do are airboats. That's going to be indigenous to the Florida area. I can tell you this. If you go to my hometown of Pittsburgh, I want to take an airboat ride. It ain't happening. So that's a Florida only thing. Escape rooms. We already talked about golf. There's mini golf. Family entertainment centers. Paint and sips. So if you are a kid watching this, which you probably aren't, because this is geared towards adults looking to move to North Palm Beach. Um, if you are a kid, uh, you won't understand this. This is for us uh, parents, empty nesters, whatever. This is whenever somebody had the brilliant, brilliant idea of piping a bunch of alcohol, usually wine, um, that's the sip part. And then you go to a place where you have a paintbrush and paint and you paint all over the place. Uh, it's really fun. It sounds like a really bad recipe for ruining clothes, and it is. I think that's why they try to diffuse the situation by not calling it paint and drunk, uh, paint and get crunk, but paint and sip. Just sip it, that's all. So in the July and August months, this is gonna come in handy, water parks. Uh, there's also animal encounters. Of course, there's boating, tons of art, arts and culture, shopping, spa and wellness. Some of the favorite things I love to do, and maybe in upcoming videos I'll have a little bit more, is tours and sightseeing. I know for those of us that don't know the area and want to get used to it, a tour and a sightseeing is a fantastic idea. Okay, my last section of North Palm Beach, I'm gonna nerd out as I usually do. It is real estate, my favorite. Okay, prepare to see some high-end real estate houses. The highest sold property is $41.8 million, 12520 Seminole Beach Road, North Palm Beach, September 16th, 2020. So while I'm talking, you're gonna be seeing that real estate porn coming up on your screen. Please enjoy. So the highest priced property for sale at the time I recorded this video is, you know, it's, you might think it's 80 million, <laughs> no, it's $79,500,000. And that is going to be right down the road from the highest sold property, which was 12520 Seminole Beach Road. This one is 12525 Seminole Beach Road. A lot of 20s, a lot of 25s. 
And that will wrap up the North Palm Beach um, community, another oceanfront community. Stay with me, hit the subscribe button, bell all notifications as I'm gonna continue plugging through these oceanfront communities, luxury properties for sale. Okay, the third oceanfront luxury beach community that I'm gonna talk about is Boynton Beach. B-O-Y-N, Boynton Beach, T-O-N Beach. If you've ever been there, comment below. Let me know what you thought of it. If you live there, that's fantastic. Um, comment below, let us know what your top three favorite things are about Boynton Beach. If you've never lived there, but you want to live there, comment below and let me know and I'll help you out. Brian sells Miami, realtor. Moving on. So Boynton Beach is the third largest municipality in Palm Beach County with a population of 78,000 people. So you can see as I'm going on with this video, we started out where it was narrow with very few people, very few houses, and we we're going down to the south. We're making our way down to South Florida and the population's getting bigger. So we went from, what was it, 395, 400 people to 12,000. Now we're up to 78,000 people in Boynton Beach. Boynton Beach Inlet is kind of a draw where people hang out. And it is also known as South Lake Worth Inlet. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the inlet now. It's an artificial, it's man-made, and it leads out to the ocean roughly 130 feet wide, six to 12 feet deep. As with most inlets, and where I take my boat out as Hullover um, Inlet, a lot of people accumulate on the sides. I mean, listen, if you got nothing else to do on a weekday, you're tired, or even if it's a, um, uh, maybe you're not retired and it's a weekend and you want to go hang out. It's quite interesting to just sit back and chill, let the sun hit you. I'm primarily, I'm thinking whenever I, I'm painting this picture, it's not so much in July and August when it's scalding hot. I'm thinking whenever it's winter up north and people are posting snowy photos and videos on their Instagram stories, I'm thinking you're heading out to the inlet, grab a lawn chair, cooler, and you sit and chill and just watch boats go in and out. That's a lot of people accumulate and just watch beats, uh, boats go in and out, nothing else more. Uh, some do fish, you can obviously fish there as well. You can do both, fish and watch boats. Now something I've noticed about these inlets is it's a frequent hangout for pelicans. So those of you Floridians that pelicans no longer excite you, um, tune, you could tune this out. But for those of us that are from the north, that again, I'm a Pittsburgher, we don't have pelicans. Uh, it's pretty cool to just like sit propped out a chair, crack a beer or a sip and paint, uh, or even just a water Gatorade for those of us that don't drink. And uh, you know, just lazily watch the boats come and go and sit there and chill next to uh, a pelican. I just think it's so cool. Those things are so fascinating for the, those of us that haven't grown up around it. So a super cool feature that you can find online for Boynton Beach is a webcam. So this webcam has multiple angles and uh, it, has footage multiple times of the day stamped, so you can kind of see what's going on. So maybe you're thinking about going to the beach and um, maybe you live down there and you live off in more into the inlands and it's raining there, which is not uncommon to not be raining on the beach or on the ocean if it's raining on the inlands. And you're not quite sure if um, there's rain in Boynton Beach Inlet, you can go to their website and check out the cam and uh, see if it's raining there. I think it's pretty cool, I don't know. Maybe your uh, boyfriend said he's going there to fish and you just want to check up on him, or girlfriend, and you can check that out as well. So one of the big draws is going to be Oceanfront Park. It does have ADA uh, accommodations. Lifeguards are usually there nine to five. Um, the staff is going to be certified as first responders or EMTs. This is a popular place for skimboarding. Um, Skimboarding is whenever, I've tried this. These kids make it look so easy. Skimboarding is when you have this really thin surfboard, not very wide, not very long, just enough for your two feet, I would say. Um, and you don't go in the actual water. It's the water that whenever the wave crashes on the beach and it starts going back and it's really low, that water, like a couple inches, they run and throw the skimboard down and jump on it like a surfboard and they don't skim towards the water, they skim parallel with it. It's really cool and there are they have designated locations for skimboarding and surfboarding probably so you don't knock somebody out with your surfboard if you tried surfboarding and were clumsy like me probably kill somebody next to you they have picnic areas pavilions concessions parking um, playgrounds 
rentals, restrooms, sea turtles, and sustainability. All really cool stuff at the um, Boynton Beach Oceanfront Park. So residents tend to stay around Boynton Beach because there's just so much to do. There's hundreds of restaurants, including waterfront ones, which are my favorite. Anytime I go to an oceanfront or beach community and stay or visit people, whatever, it's a, main, it's, it's a must for me to go to an oceanfront restaurant. There's outdoor style shopping centers. If you've never been to one of these, uh, it's really cool. It's, the stores are closed, but they're just open air. Like there's no mall lid, so to speak, over top of them. And there's also a regional mall uh, for those times whenever it does get cold in January, a little bit in December there to the point where it's in the 40s and 50s. So they do have a mall that is completely enclosed as well. There are eight recreation centers, 29 parks. I wanted to break down each park, but honestly, I think you would lose interest in this video if I talked about 29 different parks. So you're just going to have to know there are 29 parks for you in Boynton Beach. There's a municipal beach, a pool and a year-round recreation for kids of all ages. Um, there is a marina. One of the biggest marinas there is Boynton Harbor Marina. There are loads of golf cor courses, as there are in most every Florida town. Uh, the waterfront restaurants I recommend is Two Georges Waterfront Grill, Prime Catch, and um, a little more just above bar quality is gonna be um, Banana Boat. So when it comes to real estate, the highest recent sold was $90 million in 2019. Now this is an off-market property, so unfortunately, and we take pride here when we make these videos of flashing these luxury properties and going inside them with the photos we find, but this was an off-market deal, so we couldn't find it anywhere, but it was just recorded in the uh, local municipality. There's just a few around $4 million, and a couple more sales that must have been off-market. There were two at $56 million one at 48.5 million, one at 47.8 million, and one at 41.9 million. So that's Boynton Beach, a lot to do there, oceanfront, golf, marina, and the inlet, and there's 29 parks, so a lot to do, a lot to digest.